Breast cancer used to be the number one killer of women, but now it's number two to lung. But um, it's estimated that about 230,000 women will develop breast cancer um, this year. So it's very common. Overall lifetime risk for women without any family history or risk factors is about one in 12 women will develop breast cancer. There are two important things in terms of overall survival in breast cancer. One is the size of the cancer when it's diagnosed, and the second one is the tumor biology. But in general, for a woman who has a mammographically detected tumor, the overall life expectancy of that woman is greater than, is close to 90% at 10 years. Every time a woman develops a cancer, or anybody develops a cancer, cells are released from the cancer into the circulation. Um, we think when they're very, very small cancers. So even before cancers are detected, these cells can already be released into circulation. One thing we know about breast cancer is that some of these cells go to the bone marrow. And women who have these cells detectable in their bone marrow are at increased risk for the developing of breast cancer. And what we've done is we've begun to molecularly characterize these cells to determine which cells go on to develop metastatic disease and which cells will never develop metastatic disease. And the reason why this is important is women usually do not die from their localized disease, they die from the disseminated disease or, or by developing metastatic disease. So if we can target these cells and kill them before they go on to form metastases, we'll increase overall life expectancy for women with breast cancer. So what we've done is we've um, molecularly characterized these cells and we found that some cells, um, are, some of these disseminated tumor cells express the gene called ERB2. And this is the same molecule that's commonly referred to as HER2. Now we found that these cells are present in women who have HER2 negative tumors. In breast cancer treatment, if a woman has a HER2 positive tumor, she's treated with Herceptin. And this is a very effective drug for treating these women. Um, but there's a certain subpopulation that we and others have described of tumor cells that are released from the tumor and go on to acquire the expression of HER2. So what we're proposing in this trial is to look at these disseminated tumor cells, do a molecular profile, and those cells that express HER2 in patients who will have not received trastuzumab will receive trastuzumab. And the reason why this is important is several fold. Number one is because a study like this would represent a paradigm shift in the treatment of women with breast cancer. So for example, you can take women and you can do surgery up front, give them adjuvant chemotherapy, and then say, okay, as far as we know, you're cancer free, and then you just wait, and you wait for them to recur. And some of the women, women will recur, and some of the women will never recur. But ideally, what this test would do is it would provide a test for identifying those women who still harbor these cells and would benefit from additional therapy. The other thing is, is um, in terms of representing a paradigm shift, what it would do is it would change, women would have their therapy based on the profile of the disseminated tumor cells instead of just the primary tumor. Because we know that these cells evolve and change as they go through the circulation. And so instead of just targeting everything to the biological characteristics of the primary tumor, we target it to the cells that are actually going to go on and form metastatic disease. And this would result in a, really, in a real paradigm shift in the treatment of breast cancer if our, if our trial is successful. And the final thing it'll do, by giving these women who we know are, are, have HER2 positive disseminated tumor cells, who are not receiving trastuzumab, and we know that they're at very high risk of recurrence, we're hoping we can increase their overall life expectancy. I believe with all my heart that these kinds of studies are, are essential in, to help women and other cancer patients because as surgeons, we're great at curing the primary disease. It's the cells that escape from the tumor and, and go on to form metastatic disease are what cause patients to die. And so I believe that by targeting these cells, um, we can save lives. And this is the essence of really treating cancer patients and increasing overall life expectancy. This trial could not be done without funding from the Gateway for Cancer Research. Um, I would especially like to thank the donors who open their hearts to these women and donate to agencies like Gateway for Cancer Research and provide the funding for these high-risk, high-gain trials that have the potential to truly benefit patients and truly push forward the treatment of breast cancer and other cancers um, without funding like this and sponsors such as those of you who donate to Gateway for Cancer Research, we couldn't be conducting these trials.